here is uh, a fish tank problem. We're working a little calculus here. So we have a fish tank 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters square by 9 centimeters deep, 9 centimeters of water deep. So it must be one of those little beta fish tanks that you put on your desk. Uh, what is the force on the bottom of the tank due to the water? And then what is the force on each side of the tank also due to the water? So let's see. First I'll do a simple drawing like this just from the side and say, okay, so it's 10 centimeters this way and into the board. And then, of course, this isn't very good here. It uh, should be a little less this way. It's 9 centimeters that way. There we go. So 10 by 10 into the board by 9. And let's think of a coordinate system going down like that with the origin at the water level. And now, okay, so now the question is, what is the force in the bottom plane? Well, it's really just the weight of the water. You could just say mg, uh, the weight of the water. But since this is a fluid mechanics section, let's do it with pressures and say the force on the bottom is equal to the pressure on the bottom, I'll switch it to BOT, times the area of the bottom. Right, so that area we know is just 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. The pressure we could get from the hydrostatic uh, pressure calculation, we could say it's the density of water times G, gravitational acceleration, times uh, D, or depth, or height, or you know how far down you go. So times, uh, I don't know, let's call that H, how tall the water is. So that's the pressure down there. And then the area is just the area. So let's put some numbers in those. A thousand in MKS units is the density of water. Um, G is, of course, 9.8. Uh, the height in terms of MKS units is 0 0.09. Right, we're getting the pressure all the way at the bottom. And then the area is 10 by 10 in meters. That's 0.1 times 0.1. So there's everything you need. The force is, let's see, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. This is roughly going to cancel more or less. It's going to be around 10 newtons, 8.82 newtons. I'll just put 8.8 .8 newtons. Okay. Force on the bottom. What about the force on the side? So you'd say, well, I'll just do the same thing, right? Well, it's a 9 by 10, and I just got to get the pressure. And then what you need to realize, what makes this a calculus problem, is the pressure is changing as we go down the side here. Ah, uh, yes, the pressure changes. The pressure isn't constant. So in this simple uh, equation, force is pressure times area, that's assuming the pressure is constant over the area. If the pressure is not constant over the area, you have to break the area up into little pieces you know what that means, you have to do an integral, all right? So, and this is an integral over an area. So you may or may not have done that before. You're about to do it, here we go. So, <clears throat> I don't know, I'll draw it in three dimensions to help you visualize a little bit like that. And then, so here's this fish tank, and it's full up to here. And we'll imagine the force on this side. So here's the front you were just looking at, but there is a side. Let's get the force on that side. So if force is pressure times area, but if we have to think about little contributions from little pieces of area where the pressure has some value, we would say the differential or the, the, the small amount of force is the pressure times some small amount of area. And that's how we would set this up as an integral. And then we integrate all the area pieces to get the pressure times the full area, and that gives us the total force. All right, so it's a, a surface integral, or an area integral. Um, let's see. So what that means is the total force is the integral. It's a two-dimensional integral. Okay. So to do an integral like this and apply it to physics, you know, the key is always figuring out what are you doing with dA? Right? What, what, what coordinate system are you in, etc. So you could say, okay, well, I'm going to go in a coordinate system where this is y and this is x. So if you're in Cartesian coordinates, then dA equals d y, dx dy. The order doesn't matter. Right, so you think of little rectangles where you move dx and dy, dx dy, dx dy. But one thing that can help you out is to try to recognize how the pressure changes. Does it change with one direction and not the other? Okay, I've switched. This was 
We're really going to do it Z down, sorry. So anyway, so you would, would, is one of these, is the pressure constant with one of these directions? And you can see that it is, right? Because the pressure increases down. Here we go down with Y. Watch this. I'm going to do this to you. There's X and there's Z. Whoa, coordinate transformation. Look at that. Now we match this. So we're going to think, what is the pressure? Oh, and it's even the origin is supposed to be here. Oh, I just screwed this up in multiple ways. Let's see. There you go. The origin is where the water level is going down in Z. Uh, and there's X. And now it's D, Z, D, X. All right. Yeah, I could redo it, but, you know, it's a good educational process here. Okay, so what I'm trying to think about now is this D, Z, uh, uh, dx. Good Lord. All right. We integrate down and we integrate across. But what you look for in something like this is, does the pressure really vary with both of these? So what I was trying to get to is no. The pressure varies with z, but the pressure is constant in x in this case. So what that means is you don't actually have to integrate along x. I mean, you can, but the pressure function isn't going to vary with x. The integral is just going to give you a constant. You're going to evaluate it for the width. You could also just say my differential area are these little rectangles like that. So my differential area is actually dz times the width. Or we could just go ahead and write in 10 centimeters. Or you could call it w and plug it in later. I'm going to call it w because, you know, we're doing this kind of symbolic. So it'll be dz times w, where this is w across there. So you see, we can pull that off because we know the pressure doesn't vary that way. So what's the point of doing the integral? So then you would say the pressure is the integral, and we're integrating along z from 0 to 9 centimeters down. And of the pressure, which is a function of z, but for dA, we just say it's times the width times dz. And so this one is really just a one-dimensional integral like that. And then we keep going and say, what is that function? How is pressure a function of z. Uh, well, it's just rho g z. That's why I define z this way. So we could just use the hydrostatic equation. Rho g d is d is the depth. Well, d is just z in this case. So it's equal to the integral of rho g z w is a constant dz from 0 to 9 centimeters. Okay. Let's see. Is that all correct? I think that's right. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, in this case, now we just uh, do the integral. So we're integrating z dz, so it's equal to 1 half, that is a 2, z squared, and then rho g w, rho g w, evaluated from 0 to 9 centimeters. So we're going to evaluate it at 9, minus evaluate it at 0, but that makes 0. So now we just plug in some numbers here. You know, 1 half um, point oh, um, point oh 0.09 squared, All right, we're doing this at MKS, times 1,000 is the density, times 9.8, times the width is 0.1. So there's all your numbers, and, oh, you know, we could estimate it here. This is like 0.1 times 0.1 times 0.1 cancels that. It's roughly half of 9.8. So, and I get 3.97, which is roughly half of 9.8. So there you go. You can get the force at the bottom when the pressure is constant. Simple F equals PA. If the pressure varies in a dimension, you have to do an interval.